next speaker? Well, for a start, let me say that I often go for a walk down in my local park at, in the afternoon. Every once in so often, a little dog or something would be sure to follow me home. But what happened to Moira uh, to read us? <laughs> um, she had something else follow her home one early, early one morning from work that would change her attitude to many things in life. Rita now is heavily involved with her with uh, UFO Research Queensland in the um, Ipswich Division. And I will let her recount that frightful encounter. Ladies and gentlemen, Rita Hayden. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my backgrounding. I came from a property on the Darling Downs some years ago, joined the Air Force, spent several years there. Then I came and worked in Brisbane at the Royal Automobile Club until my, my retirement recently. I was going home on the exhibition Saturday night four years ago. I had work back as we'd had a very busy night. I should have been home in bed. I don't know whether it was uh, a good policy that I was there or a bad one, but anyway, it hasn't done me any harm. About 10 to 2 in the morning, I was travelling along Brisbane Street West going towards my home about two kilometres away and at a street to there I heard this swoosh and a bump go across my car. Probably six months out of me, couldn't work out what it was, couldn't see anything. I looked in that direction but later I worked it out it must have come back this way. Next thing was I pulled in to a set of lights here there was a red car sitting there in front of me, a hotel there and a few other buildings around. And I don't know whether I saw the shadow of this thing coming down or what, but I certainly heard no noise. Next thing was this huge craft, silver craft of about 30 foot, 10 metres long, landing in beside me. I had no noise whatsoever, so no wheels came down. I thought it was sort of craft in distress. Next thing was I looked and it had no wings. So I turned around and no tail, it just came in that shape at the back, as you can see there. There, just came into that shape. Anyway, uh, the lights had turned red and I had to sit there behind the other car, so I decided I'd be very smart and put my window down to get a better look at it. Brand new car with everything electric. Put out every window, I think, but the right one, but eventually I got the right one down. And as I'm looking at it, thinking, well, what are you? You could see it shimmering like that, coming closer and closer towards me. And I thought, oh, I don't like the look of this. It might hit the side of my car. Who would have believed it if I'd have put in a claim to the insurance company? <laughs> so anyway, I, I'm saying to it, go away, go away. And then I tried to put up my window. I'm pressing every button of the right one. Next thing is the window went up, and you could distinctly see it moving away because the red light came on, the car in front of me moved off, I moved off, it moved off. So I thought, well, what are you going to do now? Down here, I had to cross a fairly narrow bridge. That was my route that I took. This is what the craft took. Anyway, I turned around and I thought, well, ha ha, you can't fit on this bridge with me. Where are you going to go? But it finished up. It went across and there's a council building about there and a big parking area. So it flew across there, I'm coming around here, and back there was a bit of a dip, and I'm sort of lost there, and I thought, oh, well, you've gone. So I'm still trailing behind this red car, he's just merging along the road, having a good look at what he could see. Couldn't pass him because you can't sort of double lines. So I get up to here, where I turn in to go home. Incidentally, I was only about two kilometres from home. So when I went to turn into the street, there was a little car park there, and there it was, just hovering up in this car park. So this fellow in the red car went on up here, and I saw him stop, and I thought, oh, he might be coming back to see if I'm all right. So anyway, I go in and he, he drove off there, and I go around here, and I'm practically sitting under this, so I can relate to what Maurice said about sitting under this aircraft, or whatever it was, and here I am sitting under it saying, well, what on earth are you? So I sat there for a while debating, maybe I should go out and have a look, and I thought, no, I'm not that going. So, next thing is my car gave this distinctive miss. I thought, well, I'm getting out of here very quickly. 
So I took off rather suddenly, and this thing, our top would be spin like it, just like, boom, like that. Next thing was, I'm going up here, this is my route, this road here, and it's tracking me up above the houses and the trees. So by this time, I'm not very, very far from home at all. So I thought, well, if you're going up my way, why not? So it came this way, and of course, it went straight up that way. There's a church there and a pet shop. So I pulled up here through, started to go very, very slowly. And I thought, well, I'll let you go away. So I had to do a turn here, which is only about past two houses, and that's my street. So about four or five houses up the street. And I'm wandering up along there, went to go into my driveway here. And here this thing is sitting here, right over my next door neighbour's garage. Both our garages are side by side, you know, just the fence and the bit of area between us. And here it is over his garage, pointed straight onto my driveway. Well, the light was so bright, you could hardly see where you were driving. I sat in the gateway and thought, well, what am I going to do? I was home all on my own. I thought, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to try and get into the house or go to someone? So I thought, well, I'm driving into the garage. You're not stopping me. Well, this time it was getting later and later. So anyway, I turned around, I drove into the garage, got my house keys very, very quickly, and flew to the door. Had trouble getting the key in the door. I wonder why. <laughs> anyway, I turned around, I got inside, put my shoes at the steps, ran up about four or five steps to the kitchen, turned to go back down the steps to see if I could find someone or do something, and here is all my back area. It was all lit up like daylight. I've got a very, very big rumpus room and uh, glass doors leading out to a pool. Anyway, here I picked out the curtains and here it is then in this area, just above my pool and a huge big mango tree. So I thought, oh, what do you think you're going to do now? But it, it too had this huge, one huge big orange light. So I put my head out the door couple of times, but I wasn't going to go any further because the light I felt would have blinded me. Next thing is the little dog next door. She started put her head back and started to howl and wail. So I put my head around the door and I said, are you frightened too? Little Jodie was her name. Anyway, that craft, whatever it was, hovered, hovered <coughs> there for a solid hour. It, from it was coming sort of I don't know whether it was rays or a misty kind of a thing. All these beautiful colours were coming off and it was rather spectacular because it was a bright moonlight night. The moon was back over in that area. I have got a picture there of where the moon was. Anyway, uh, I thought, well, I'm not going to bed while you're here. So I wandered around and I'd go upstairs and I'd go back down and have another peep and here it was sitting there. Eventually, about 3 a.m., it must have backed off because it went very slowly. It seemed to have hovered at the same height. It seemed to have been going at the same height. And it turned around eventually. It finished up like a large orange. That was the last that I saw. But I thought it must be safe to go to bed now. I had two more late nights to do, so I had to try and get some sleep. But that same night, there were 11 sightings of something over the western suburbs of Brisbane, which is Oxley, Dindalee, um, Cinnamon Park, all through that area. At half past three that same morning, there was another sighting over in Iran. Whether it was the same thing or not, I don't know. But since then, I had a most gorgeous fern tree growing over the fence of my pool. It had thrown up a beautiful big frog that had died. I think it threw up about eight, I counted. Finally, it all died. The little dog, about a month later, the neighbour called me and said, Have a look at this. You'd touch her and you'd get a handful of hair from the fur, or whatever you like to call it. Anyway, she ended up, she got a new coat and it was black and glossy, but she never ever got, it did very well after that. She was very sick, they had to take her to the vet, and eventually she went blind and they had to have her put down. My mango tree was flourishing beautifully, covered me in the backyard, a beautiful big bow and special. It has since died. About two years later, it just decided a limb and died, and another limb and died, and so forth. So I made the remark to someone the other day, well, I'm still the only thing around that had anything to do with it. It's still here. So they said, well, you know what they say, you're going to die yet. <laughs> so the only thing that I would like to see, and to 
find is that man in the red car. I just wish he would come forward because he saw what I saw. He had to. And this was something, the shape, I'm not a very good drawer, but this is something of the shape of what I saw. It was a huge sort of craft, something cigar shaped. Uh, back there was the one big orange light. It did not have any other lights on it as far as I could see. There were no windows in it. It was just a metallic silver, very light silver. It is material I have never seen in my life before. And another thing I forgot to mention, the next day my pool would have been down a good foot in water. And I thought, oh, the sun was extra hungry today. I must have, you know, taken the water out of the pool. But I am told, no, that's why it was hovering there. So I don't know, I mean, I can't. I can only tell you what happened. So that's about it. Apart from that, coming up the highway a few times, I have seen lights coming all the way up the highway, across the opposite flats, and turned to right up the highway. Another night from uh, Red Bank Plains, I had the same thing happened, and so on. I was out at Cambuia in 1994, and I had a similar experience out there. My sister-in-law and I both saw this huge big light come across Cambuia, which is as flat as this, and I decided I was going to try and get a better look at it, but it just turned and headed out towards the Gundy Windy Highway, and that was the last I saw of it. But of course now I'm not out so much late at night, so I don't see what I used to see. And that's about it. How many people here from interstate or overseas? See how far people come for our mangoes? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Rita? Any thoughts that you might have wanted to go over and you know, have a look at a proper good look at it? Yes, I was going to, but I wasn't going. Oh, <laughs> I'd right. love to. If I'd have had someone in my house, oh, I right. had a nephew who was a senior police officer living at my place. Unfortunately, he wasn't coming. He's been six foot four and he's five on the floor. Do you carry a camera now? Yes. <laughs> And a pen also. I didn't even get that man's registration. I thought I could remember it. I thought I'd done enough with registrations to memorise it. But I couldn't even... Uh, I tried, tried to even find a tube of lipstick to turn around and to write down his registration. But I couldn't. Um, you, said, <coughs> you said that the object was shedding a light over your neighbour's house when you got home. When you first saw it in the, uh, the, the traffic lights, what, what was it? did it have a light on then? Yes, yes. Oh, all the time it had a light. Yes, this big orange light that was sort of, it was sort of set back. It looked as though it was set. You know how our aircraft have the lights towards the nose? This was sort of set back, but it was just this huge, huge orange light. I think Maureen referred to something uh, being about the size of the moon. Well, this is what this was. But mm. on this craft? Yes, yes. But it was orange. It did not change colour at all. This was in 1992, August 1992, in the early hours of the Sunday morning. You said it was uh, hovering for about an hour out in the back of the garden. Uh, you didn't uh, attempt to sort of ring up anybody or anything like that? No, I didn't. Uh, unfortunately, the man that side of me is about 84 years of age. You wouldn't have heard me from the screen of the house down. I slid around that, that side right away from the driveway. The chap that side of me, Normally, if he still got that, he got up to see what he was bargaining for. Why I did not go around and try and get him out, I don't know. I don't think I was sort of going to leave the house, but it, it was an absolute experience in the house. You yes. didn't mention what size you thought the craft was. Yes, yes, about 30. There, just came to that show. Anyway, the lights had turned red and I had to sit there behind the other car. So I decided I'd be very smart and put my window down to get a better look at it. Brand new car with everything electric. Put out every window, I think, but the right one, but eventually got the right one down. And as I'm looking at it, thinking, well, what are you? You could see it shimmering like that, coming closer and closer towards me. And I thought, oh, I don't like the look of this. It might hit the side of my car. Who would have believed it if I'd have put in a claim to the insurance company? So anyway, 
I, I'm saying to it, go away, go away, and then I tried to put up my window, I'm pressing every button but the right one. Next thing is the window went up and you could distinctly see it moving away because the red light came on, the car in front of me moved off, I moved off, it moved off. So I thought, well, what are you going to do now? Down here, I had to cross a fairly narrow bridge. That was my route that I took. This is what the craft took. Anyway, I turned around and I thought, well, haha, you can't fit on this bridge with me, where are you going to go? But it finished up, it went across, and there's a council building about there, and a big parking area. So it flew across there, I'm coming around here, and back there, was a bit of a dip, and I, I sort of lost it then, I thought, oh, well, you've gone. So I'm still trailing behind this red car, he's just merging along the road, having a good look at what he could see. Couldn't pass him because you can't sort of other lines. So I get up to here, where I turn in to go home. Incidentally, I was only about two kilometres from home. So when I went to turn into the street, there was a little car park there, and there it was, just hovering up in this car park. So this fellow in the red car went on up here, and I saw him stop, and I thought, oh, he might be coming back to see if I'm all right. So anyway, I go in and he, he drove off me, and I go around here, and I'm practically sitting under this, so I can relate to what Maurice said about sitting under this aircraft, or whatever it was, and here I am sitting under this aircraft. In what way do you feel different now than what you did before the incident? I don't feel different in any way. I feel it has been a wonderful experience. And Martin came up and Desi Pacini and interviewed me. Desi was the coordinator in Ipswich at the time. And Martin told me I was one of the chosen ones, which I think um, uh, made me much more contented. Uh, the only thing, I mean, I'm not paranoid about it, the only thing I do not like driving very much at night time late on my own. I have come down with all the range I have to come in and scout because I came from the Devils originally. Never worried me, whatever the day I was it was. But now, if I'm out late at night, I sort of feel like I'd like something in the car with me. I find also that I do watch the sky, what, what, me. Because I want to know how that thing knew where I lived. How I got there to my home that night before me. I mean, I could have picked any other house in the street. But it's absolutely authentic, it's just as it happened. And I, I saw no, nothing in it. I don't even know if anything was quite in it. I can't tell you that. Because I saw nothing. I saw no life whatsoever, which I would have liked to have seen. But something had appeared at my door, about seven foot tall, I don't think I would have been here. You wouldn't need a bad heart, I can assure you of that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rita.